the law of attraction. So this is something that I have had mixed feelings about for quite a while. And it's because I do think there are flaws in the way that it's interpreted and framed. But at the same time, there are little pieces of truth to it as well. So the law of attraction is all about what you focus on, you will receive. And it's about manifestation, visualization. And those are pieces that I do truly believe in, but there are some parts of it that leave me feeling skeptical and just straight up saying like, yeah, that's not true. So let's talk about that today. We're gonna talk about the things that do make sense when it comes to the law of attraction, but then the things that just seem absolutely absurd and there's no way it could be real. But before we do that, make sure you take a second to like the video and to make sure you are subscribed with notifications turned on so that you'll be notified each week when I post a new video. It also lets YouTube know that you enjoy this content and it'll help me share it with more people across the platform. So thank you so much. So you've probably heard of the documentary, The Secret, and that documentary is kind of what popularized the law of attraction in recent years. Honestly, the first time I watched it, well, even the second time I watched it, I truly just couldn't fully take it seriously. I don't know if it's the way that it was written or the way it was delivered, um, but it something seemed off about it and things just didn't fully seem logical and like they made sense. And I'm even somebody who believes in the universe and energy and mindset and what you think can manifest things in your real life. I believe all that. But even I, the logical part of my brain, was very skeptical about the way they were framing what the law of attraction is and how it works. So basically, the secret is the law of attraction, which is everything that you have in your life is something that you've attracted, whether it is something bad or something good. It's what you focus your energy and your thoughts on, you attract into your life. So for example, if you keep thinking to yourself, I have no money, I'm broke, you're going to keep putting yourself in a situation where you stay broke and you attract that situation to you. Alternatively, if you say things and think things to yourself like, I am successful, money comes easily to me, you'll be attracting situations that will make that scenario real in your life. They say, instead of saying, I don't want to be late, instead you should say, I am early. Because apparently the law of attraction doesn't listen to the I don't want to be part, it only listens to the late part, so it'll attract you to be late. Versus if you say, I am early, it hears early, so it'll cause you to be early. But the thing that I have an issue with is there are some times where that's just not realistic, honestly. And I think in The Secret, one of the issues I have with it is they're not really taking into consideration realistic scenarios. So for example, if I need to be at work at three and it's a 20 minute drive from my house, if I leave my house at 2.50, I'm not, I'm gonna be late. I'm not gonna be early. I'm not even gonna be on time. It doesn't matter how many times I'm driving in the car saying, I am early, I am early. There are just some times where it's not logical. It, it just simply cannot happen. Another issue I had with the law of attraction, at least with the way that The Secret framed it, is that anything that happens to us, whether it's good or bad, is our own doing. And I do believe that to a certain extent, I do. But there are times where we have zero control of the external factors that happen to us. And I don't think it's fair to blame people for something bad happening to them when they didn't have any control over the situation. And you know, the secret was kind of framing it like, well, yeah, well, if you're having negative thoughts and negative emotions, well, you're just attracting negativity into your life. And that's why that, that car accident happened. That's why this other horrible thing happened. And I don't think that's fair to put the blame on people because we are living a human experience. I talk about this a lot. We have ups and downs. There are times where it's really, really good and then times where it's really, really hard, but that's just part of living a human life. And that's not fair to expect people to be happy, 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 happy all the time because that's not realistic. It's not. And they were pretty much telling you, when you feel bad, stop feeling bad. When you feel good, keep feeling good, like forever. I think that's actually really harmful. Something that I teach on this channel is how to deal with negative emotions and how to cope with them, how to see them in a different way, building up your mindset. When we are taught to instantly try to shove away any negative emotion that we feel, it's making us weaker, not stronger. It's making us run away from whatever 
root problems that we're experiencing and it makes us not able to handle them. I am a huge advocate for mindset training, building up your mindset, looking at your negative emotions in a different light and trying to understand yourself on a deeper level so that when you do feel something negative, you know how to cope with it and you know how to manage it rather than run away from it and try to fight it. So I don't understand why they would try to encourage people to shove their negative emotions away and ignore them and pretend that they're not there because that's making it worse. And same thing alternatively, like when we're feeling happy, that's amazing and we should, we should cherish those moments. But at the same time, we can't pretend to be happy 24 seven, that's ridiculous. We're not robots, we're people, we're humans. So yes, mindset is huge, but I think the way that they're approaching it from the law of attraction point of view is just totally missing the mark. Now this next thing is one of the biggest issues I had with the law of attraction, and basically it's the three steps that you have to take for it to work. So um, they talk about the first step being ask, so ask for what it is you want, whether it's a house, a car, money, a relationship, jewelry, whatever it is, right? Step two was to believe that somehow it'll come into your life. So if you just believe, you just think about it, you ask for it, you believe that it's gonna be yours, then step three was receive. Look, <laughs> again, I love the universe, I think, it is really powerful and there's a lot there to learn about and to utilize, but there's also a realistic part. It has to be a balance between, yes, visualizing and manifesting something, but then also doing the work to get to it. I would never ever tell anybody to just think of what you want and then do nothing and then you're gonna get it because that's not realistic. That's not how life works. I'm sure there is like 0.1% of the time where it's just, dumb luck that something like that happens but the rest of the time that's not how it works if i want a new car if i just thought about it thought about it thought about it asked the universe for it and then did nothing i'm not gonna get the car no one's gonna buy the car for me you have to do actual work every single day little actions that get you closer and closer to the goals so i can understand the first two steps that they were trying to explain like asking for something and believing that you'll get it so th this is something that i even do with manifestation and visualization i write down what i want where i want to live what i want to have how much money i want to make what i want my life to look like i write those things down and i think about it and i look at pictures because it helps me get into that mindset of yes this is my goal and it gets me excited and motivated but the next thing after that, I don't just sit around and do nothing. I do work every single day that I feel like is getting me closer to my goal, to my dreams. It, it takes patience and it takes constant action and emotion and movement. But that's when I do think that visualization paired with the work and the actions will eventually get you that goal. So it's not just thinking about it and doing nothing. And I, that's how they framed it in the documentary. And that's just really not how it goes. In the documentary, they only mentioned action like two or three times. And it was just so heavy on just thinking and visualizing, but barely mentioning action. And when they did mention it, it was like, they said something like, sometimes action may be necessary or something along those lines. It's just like, no, action is always necessary, guys. It's always necessary. Let me give you a quick personal anecdote. So we know that the law of attraction states that whatever we focus on, whatever we think and feel, we're going to attract more of, whether it's positive or negative. Well, I do believe that to a certain extent. However, let me tell you this quick story. One year I went over to a friend's house for a Halloween party and when I got there I parked in a specific spot and I wasn't sure if I could park there. So I asked my friend and he's like, oh yeah, you'll be fine, don't even worry about it. So I didn't think about my car the entire night. I didn't think about anything negative the entire night actually because I was too busy having fun with all of my friends. We were playing games, we were dancing, laughing, all of that stuff. But the next morning after not thinking about my car once or not thinking about anything other than the party, um, I go out to go to my car and my car's not there. It got towed because it turns out I wasn't actually allowed to park there. And so how did I attract that into my life? 
you know? Yeah, it was totally my bad for parking there. So like, I can totally accept that. My point though, is that I wasn't dwelling on it the whole night. I wasn't thinking about anything like that at all the, the entire night. Why did that happen? Well, because sometimes bad things happen that we don't really have control over. Um, alternatively, there was another uh, situation one year. I went to the beach. I couldn't find parking at all. I parked in a spot where I wasn't 100% clear on if I was allowed to park there or not because the signs were a little bit confusing, but there was no other parking spot that I could find. So I just decided to take a chance um, and park the car there. The entire time at the beach, I was worried. I was like, oh my God, I hope they don't tell my car. I hope I don't get a, a, a ticket. I was worried for most of the time there. But guess what happened when I got back? My car was still there, I didn't have a ticket, everything was totally fine. I mean, why is it when I was positive and having a good time not worrying about anything, something bad happened to me in my car? But another time when I was totally worried about it, nothing bad happened to my car. You know what I mean? So I think it just really depends and I think th the way that they framed it was just totally dramatic. There's just certain ways that it's taught and framed that I do not agree with at all and I think that's unfortunate because there are some good parts to the law of attraction that I do believe are real and legitimate and it just it just sucks because the parts that are over dramatized and don't logically make sense i feel like overpower the parts that are good about it and overpower the things that do make sense another important thing to note here is that yes our thoughts and our thinking patterns can 100 percent either help us or harm us and they can affect our outcomes in our daily lives and so i'm not talking about like if we're feeling sad or anxious or depressed like those are legitimate feelings that need to be validated and those are things that we we can help people learn how to cope with and learn how to to handle them in a positive way but i'm talking about when we're sweating the small stuff and and being mad or upset about the little things that literally don't impact our lives in any way if we're thinking about like oh my gosh i can't believe this line is so long oh my gosh i just spilled coffee on my pants my whole day is ruined oh my gosh i can't believe this person said this like that's what i'm talking about that can really really just attract more negativity to us i actually did make an entire video about how to not sweat the small stuff so click up here if you are interested in watching that basically the point i want to get across is that yes i do believe that the law of attraction exists so i want to encourage you to be open-minded about it and try it but to also at the same time be skeptical and critically think about what some people are trying to tell you the law of attraction is and to be skeptical of the parts that really don't make any realistic sense. Coming soon on my channel, I will be making a video about how to use manifestation and visualization the right way, <laughs> realistically. That's really worked for me and it's worked for countless of other people. So stay tuned for that video on my channel. I hope that you were able to resonate with what we talked about today. Maybe you learned something new or maybe you have something you would like to add to the conversation. So if you do, make sure you leave a comment down below and we can keep the conversation going. In the meantime, I'm going to link some videos up here on my channel that are all about self-care, self-improvement and personal development so make sure you check those out make sure you liked the video if you liked it share it with a friend if you found it interesting and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel with your notifications turned on thank you so much for watching i appreciate all of you and i hope that you are having a wonderful day or night wherever you are in the world and i will see you guys in next week's video bye